minutes to Mr. Massey, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Mr. Minister, the U.S. Center for Disease Control has issued a high uh, travel warning uh, to Canada uh, from American citizens. And the point being that I have with regards to the uh, order and council process is that it's secretive. Um, it doesn't have to be inclusive to different groups and organizations. The tentacles for it might reach out for advice from different groups and organizations or bureaucrats. But why not a border task force at least provides some public accountability and some innovative ideas on how to deal with this? Who would have thought that the U.S. would be issuing a travel advisory against Canada to its, its citizens? But that's where we're at right now because of their advanced um, inoculation to uh, or immunization to COVID right now. Why not have some type of a formal process like we've had in the past that would untangle border issues on a regular basis and proactively work on solutions and proposals? It's been very cruel for families waiting month by month for somebody somewhere to make a decision whether they can actually have a process to be reunited, let alone the business decisions and the business engagements that we have that are very particular regions like mold makers in my writing. Thank you uh, for the question. Uh, I, I certainly do not characterize the process as secretive. Uh, I think that uh, certainly the stakeholders with whom we engage, we, uh, we speak very openly with them. We are constantly being asked by the media where we position ourselves on issues related to the border. Uh, with respect to the CDC making decisions, they're, they're a US body, they make those decisions as a function of the situation that exists within the United States. And we make our own decisions as well in Canada. And so far, there's been uh, a mutual agreement uh, uh, as we renew on a monthly basis uh, the, the border policies. It's not to say that at some point there wouldn't be some differences, but we are working uh, not only listening to stakeholders, but we're also working with the United States so that as much as possible, we can harmonize uh, our border policy. A quick question on auto, then I'll pivot to that. Uh, similar to batteries is the sharing of information and data and privacy, especially when it comes to vehicles that are autonomous. Uh, what discussions are taking place with that? Again, this is part of a larger vision of auto. Uh, if we don't have those things, and also data management and data costs, autonomous vehicles and trucks will be compromised. What is happening with that, please? Um, I... Um, I um... Could, could you, um, I'm sorry, could, could you repeat your question? Just, I, I missed the part of it. Yes, I'll be real quick, Mr. Chair. I'm just looking for a status of us in the United States sharing information related to privacy rights um, for the use of autonomous vehicles and trucks between Canada and the United States. For them to operate in both jurisdictions, we have to have comprehensive data and privacy management plans and also cost sharing it with regards to those plans. Otherwise, they'll be compromised and won't be able to work. I'm just wondering if you can update what's going on with that because we want to do the same things with batteries, but if we don't do that with data management in autonomous vehicles, they'll become useless on each point in the border. Thank you very much for the question. So I'm going to put on my old transport hat because that was very much something that uh, I was engaged with with the uh, uh, Secretary of Transport in the United States, uh, where we harmonized with respect to regulations. And we were indeed talking about uh, the whole concept of autonomous vehicles and the very critical uh, issue of privacy rights uh, because of the of the of the environment in which autonomous vehicles would be operating. So I can assure you that both Canada and the United States, when we talk about uh, autonomous vehicles, we're not just talking about regulations with respect to how they operate, but we're because of the nature of autonomous vehicles, we're both very sensitive to privacy rights. And that is part of the discussion that my successor, Minister Al Habra, is, is uh, currently uh, engaged with, with uh, Secretary Buttigieg. Thank, thank you, Mr. Massey. 